All right. Good morning, everybody. How are we? how are you all? Well, uh, it's very early in the morning, isn't it, for most people? That's why I can't say a, an entire sentence all in one go. I'm going to get going straight away, or more or less straight away. I'm just going to wait uh, just maybe a minute just to see if anybody else turns up. But uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, hello, Jacob Train. GTX522 says, Hi, Sam. Ryan Dedder says, Remember me, Sam. Uh, I vaguely remember the name, I think. I'm Italian, says the LMB channel. That's quite... I suppose that's the one good thing about doing these streams early. Uh, you get some people from around the world. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which places are more convenient at 10 o'clock where I am. Maybe Australia and possibly Italy. Have we got some Italians here today? Morning, Mr. Sam. This is Mark. Hiya, says Ewans, Ewans, Trains and Buses. I think I said that right. Morning, Jacob. Trains with Adam. Good evening. Must be evening time, wherever Adam is. Hi, Camille. Nice to have you here. Steam of the Steam Train is here as well. Mega Drive Kid. Quite a few people. 40 people up at 10 o'clock in the morning. Very impressive. Who's being... Who's being working on, says Percy, the small engine. Ah, what engines? Well, I'm going to be doing five engines today. I've got the first one already, and uh, I'll wait till it's actually 10 o'clock. And as soon as it is, I will reveal what that is, and we shall get started. Jacob Drain says, Sam morning. <laughs> Hello, Jacob. Uh, Light Blue Diamond, Joseph Ashford, Thomas Kissil. Blimey, there's a few people here. It's 5 a.m. where I live, says Evan Games. Good gracious. I hope you didn't get up just for this. I know there are a couple of people that did. But you're crazy, whoever you did. I mean, I appreciate it, but you're you're mad. It's afternoon, says Ryan Dead. The Blue Jelly's here, hello. It's 4am for me. Sleep is for the week. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You don't sleep at the weekends then. It's 7 o'clock here in Melbourne. Okay, so yeah, I guess the Australians may get a chance to see some of this. I was about to go to bed, says Steam of the Steam Train. Well, you may still have to. I'm going to be doing this for a little while. I have got an engagement later on today. I'm not getting married or anything. Um, so I'm going to have to make sure this is wrapped up by uh, about half past 11. Uh, 12 at the very, very latest. But I'll start wrapping things up at half 11. So, with that being the case then, we had better get started. So... We're going to be kicking off today with quite an infamous locomotive, or I should say unit. Is this camera actually focused very nicely? It doesn't... Let's put my hand there. I can't tell. Shall I readjust the focus before we get started? Everyone's dying to know what this first loco is now. Yeah, that looks better, doesn't it? That is better. Excellent. Okay, well, I'm glad I didn't start off uh, with it looking terrible. Anyway, so hello, everybody. 52 people here. That's very nice to see you all. I should also mention uh, a, a shout out to Nirate Goal, who even sent a super chat before the stream began. He's entered to win the SDJR DCC fitted Ginty. So if uh, anyone wants to send a super chat during this stream, you will be entered for it still. But no, that isn't really the purpose of today. Today, I'm going to be doing some more servicing, and we've got quite a bit to get through. So we'll get started. So, haha, -ha, it is the passenger cooking pacer in the regional railways livery. And uh, this is one of the older Hornby ones, which means that both units actually have a motor inside, which is very interesting. And uh, there they are, you can see them both just there. Now, it's very, very easy to service these. And in fact, just last year, I had a customer send in about 10 sets of uh, DMUs, well, pacers, exactly like this one, uh, all for DCC fitting. And I had a lot of fun sort of wiring them together for better pickups and, you know, putting decoders inside them and everything. And some of the later versions actually don't have an engine on the second car at all. They just have the one powered car and there's a traction tyre on the... Uh, you know, on the driven wheel, and there's also uh, sort of contacts between the couplings so that all of the wheels are connected together. Don't really know what I like best. I like the fact that they're, the new ones are electrically uh, connected, but I'm not too keen on the fact that we've got one driven axle for a two-car set. So let's get started with this then. I think what I'm going to do is, uh, now this is the passenger cooking version, so there are lights uh, wired into this, so I have got to be careful because I can't remember exactly how I wired these lights in. So I'm going to undo the screw here at the front. There we are, and we'll just have a, a little refresher, see how this all goes together. So, the motor should just sort of lift out, 
and it does, I believe, give access to the worm drive. Yes, it does. And also the pickups. I don't know if you're going to see that. Let me turn the exposure up a bit just so that you actually can see. How's that looking? Might look a little bit uh, overexposed now, but at least you will see. So there are pickups. The pickups are strange. The pickups just come down and touch straight onto the wheels. Very, very bizarre. Well, it's cheap, I suppose, isn't it? It's a cheap way of doing it. Uh, but it is at least easy to maintain. So I'm just going to wipe these pickups down. And these are ones that flick, so I'm keeping my eyes well out of the way. And yeah, it's very, very simple. Look, it's just literally the motor, a worm drive, straight onto the axle there. Really, really simple. So a little bit of oil on there. Not too much, of course. Can't see any fur or nastiness stuck to that, so I think we should be good to go there. I don't think I will put any oil on the other end because I don't want to uh, get oil all over the brushes and things. So that's that. I will just oil the actual axle itself and the gear. You'll notice there are teeth on the wheels here. I don't know why. I, I assume they just must have used the wheels from their ring field designs because there's no use for those te uh, teeth. I suppose it just must have been better than producing a whole new set. So that's that. Screw that back in. I will also clean up this back axle. Uh, I don't even know if it's worth taking out. Yep, go on then. I will do. Can't remember whether this has got pickups on it. It should have. Blimey, Steam Traction Spotter, he says, Hi Sam, your video is amazing. I love your teardown videos. I always watch your streams. Well, that is extraordinarily generous. Thank you very much, Steam Traction Spotter. <clears throat> that's very, very kind of you. Thank you for that. Um, you will be entered to win the Jinty. I will see to it that you are also entered. Right, there we go. Right, well, I'm glad I did that because there is quite a bit of fluff on those pickups, which you can see just uh, stick down from the uh, the bodywork there. So let's put that in. I, as you can tell, I don't take the bodies off these now. Um, obviously, if you were chipping them, you'd need to. But uh, because these have got the lights fitted in, there's some white wires inside that are quite tight, and uh, I don't really want to be messing with those so right let's get this axle back in where it goes in fact I'm going to clean the ends of it as well because I notice they're a little bit messy there we go blimey that's a very very spiky axle on there I mean I know they're supposed to be spiky but not sharp it's extremely sharp needle sharp almost right is that going in properly it is not why not Right, I have to try and re-put this in. Yeah, I just can't get that last end in there. There we go. Ooh, a bit of brute force there. I'm not too keen on that, but it did go in. Right, a little bit of oil then. I suppose it's not strictly necessary, but if we're doing it properly, might as well. And we will just clean the rear wheel. And that's all you need to do. I cleaned the pickups while the axle was out of there, so you can just clean it up. There we go. A little bit of grub coming off there, not too much though, so that's pretty nice. And then finally we will clean the driving wheel and do a little test run at the same time. Now watch your eyes, because obviously this does have the passenger cooking lights inside, uh, which are known to blind and indeed sear the flesh of anybody in the area. Right, let's give this a shot. Hopefully I haven't broken it. Oop, I saw a hair. You've got, got to stop and get the hairs if you see them right. Well, it is working. Look at that. It's very nice and smooth. Look at there. That's all right, isn't it? Right. Not too fast to start with. Don't want to strip all that uh, oil off and throw it in my eyes or whatever. <laughs> or on my shirt. Okay. Well, that doesn't sound too bad at all, does it? That looks really pr pretty good to me. If the wheel's a little clean. I'm just using IPA, as usual. Nothing too uh, unusual about that. There we go. No need to do the insides of the wheels, of course, because the pickups work on the tops of the wheels. So it really is just the wheel surface. Not a lot of dirt coming off that, but it's not too surprising because I don't run them all that often. And yes, the light should still be on. Oh, no, it isn't. Are the light's still working? Didn't actually notice them working there. That's strange. Oh, the lights are not working. No. Right, it seems the lights have died. Let me just make sure it's nothing my end. Oh, for goodness sake. I was hoping this would be a quick one to start with. Oh, actually, these are not working either. So I wonder if it's just the kind of power supply. 
Hmm. Let's get it onto the track. Only one week to find out. They were working on the track, but it's strange that the other one wouldn't be working too, so... Let us try this. Now, I, need, I don't need to get mixed up here. I need to make sure I'm not going to service the one I've just cleaned again. Right. Let's double check. That is strange. I wonder if I just didn't put enough voltage into it. <laughs> right, is that in shot? Ah, the lights are working. Go on then, if there's any sparkies out there. Why would that be? Right, that is really quite weird. Because they're just DC LEDs. They've got a rectifier in there, so they'll work either way. They've got a big capacitor in there. I wonder if the fact that my power supply is not very powerful uh, is meaning that the LEDs are not seen. No, but that wouldn't happen. Let's try it once more. I'll ramp it up a little bit, give it a bit more juice this time. Right, anybody see any light? Uh, they are lighting very dimly. Yeah. Must be that there's just not enough power. That's strange. They are on, but they're not cooking any passengers at that speed, that's for sure. Okay, so I think that's the one I did already. Let's do this one nice and quickly then. Oh, I thought we were going to... Oh, I really thought I was going to have to get the soldering iron on and rewire it then. That would have taken a long while. Right, let's get this motor out. Let's do the same thing. Quick visual check for any hairs or anything like that. Shouldn't be any. Because I do work hard to keep the tracks clean, but you can't ever stop it completely. Right. Well, they look extraordinarily clean. When I first bought these, there was quite a lot of hair and uh, mess on them. But uh, no, it's, it's looking pretty good and clean, to be honest. Can't really fault that. Okay, a little bit of oil. Oh, I need to clean the pickups. I forgot that. Uh, let's do that. But yeah, you wouldn't. I don't expect you'd catch Hornby doing this, would you, these days, having a, a machine with two motors in it, something so small. Uh, they certainly don't do that with their recent designs. But yeah, back in the, what, probably the 70s when this came out. No expert, to be honest. But uh, it looks like a 70s sort of model with the detail on it. So, you know, obviously they weren't too bothered about that. Motors must have been good and cheap back then. Although they still use cheap motors today. So, yeah, don't really know what that means. Why a normal pacer, says LMB Channel. Was there such thing as an ab abnormal pacer? Ian Hilpus says, is your desk power supply DC? Yes, it's DC. But it's not very powerful. It's only putting out 300 milliamps at the moment, uh, which may be a little bit underpowered for the LEDs because they are quite high-powered ones, thus why they light so brightly and uh, cook the passengers. Uh, they, were, they, they were actually lighting. When I turned it up higher, they did actually light, but very, very dimly. But that's because the track power supplies can put out an amp easily. These will only do a third of that. So obviously the LEDs were more power hungry than I thought. If I had some more time today, I would hook it up to the multimeter and find out just how much current we're putting out. That would be quite interesting to do. Uh, but not for today. I'm just going to get on with this today. Right, let's put this uh, axle back in here very carefully. Well, as carefully as I can. Hmm, this is a bit of a pain, these. It's a snug fit, but I suppose if it's a snug fit, they won't drop out, which is good. Right, there we go. A little bit of oil again. Again, the oil's probably not absolutely necessary, because there's not many axles on this to cause a lot of friction, but uh, belts and braces, and your trousers don't fall down. We go and this has got to last a year so we don't want anything grating over that time should i buy a combine or a coach <laughs> sorry I, I laugh at that because i play a lot of farming simulator <laughs> and the idea of you buying a combine harvester is rather funny in fact we used to be a farming family before i was born my family owned real combine harvesters although obviously i know you were probably weren't talking about a combine harvester rather than the uh, the American kind of coach that gets called a combine. Pretty sure that's what you mean anyway. <laughs> if you meant a combine harvester, let me know. Can you and Laser, or should I say Oliver, do a video together? We did do a video together. We did a little bit of a sort of collaboration where he asked me some questions 
which was quite fun. Right, so this one's working okay. I've noticed I've left a bit of uh, cotton bud on the bodywork there, so I'll just get rid of that. And let's clean the wheels. This one doesn't sound quite as healthy, does it? It doesn't sound quite as good as the other one. I don't know if that one comes across, but it certainly sounds all right. And there we go. Clean those up. Very nice. Slightly dirtier this time. Quite a bit more dirt on that one, although it's nothing to shout about, really. All right, cool. So that is the pacer done. We will couple them together now and get them down onto the track. And uh, we'll just double check that they work down on track level and you'll get a chance to see the uh, super bright lights at maximum brightness. And it'll just also double check that I haven't dislodged any of the wiring. Because uh, I did do this quite a while ago. And uh, my soldering might have been slightly poor back in those days. Not that it's great now, but uh, I reckon I could have done a better job of it now. Okay, are they in shot? Yeah, more or less. Ah, yes. Lights at maximum brightness. There we go. So those are done. That is the pacer all finished. I'll go and put this now back into the uh, diesel cabinet, which is not a very creative name. If anybody has a better idea for uh, what I should call the diesel cabinet, uh, let me know. We'll give it a funny name. Right. So what I do now, for those of you who weren't here last time, Oh, there's a bit of sellotape here. I don't know where that come from. Uh, I'll just go and mark it off in my book. So I give it a tick and put the date down and uh, sort of book it in for a service next year. And then I will look at the list and find out what's coming up next. I believe it's a steam loco next. So that I almost heard the cheers there. Not quite as simple as the pacer, I'm afraid, though. It's going to be a touch more complicated, I reckon. But we'll have to see. Right, where's my pen? So that is a tick for the Pacer, or Regional Railways DMU, as I've got it down there. That sounds very posh. It is going to be July next month, July 18. We'll do it again July 19 then. And it gets a tick. Okay, so the next loco is a Hornby one, and it is the 8F. And I've put 8F black, but I don't suppose it could be anything else really unless I've got an SMDJR blue one or something like that. So I'm now just flicking through my booklet so that I find the page about the 8F because I do write down notes about them uh, for when I'm coming to service them so if there are any pitfalls or anything uh, I know exactly what they are before I get started and it just saves me uh, breaking things. Or at least that's the theory, sometimes I'll break things anyway but uh, normally not. Right, here we go. <laughs> this is an interesting note. This must have been a note from me many years ago. It says, wheels seem to dirty easily. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. Valve gear damaged. Yes, the valve gear was damaged on arrival, uh, but I did manage to fix that. Uh, front screw dysfunctional, body loose. That's not true anymore. I can actually cross that out. I glued the, the uh, thread into it, so that's not loose anymore. Clean, uh, valve gear tied back on with wire seems fine. DCC fitted, okay. And uh, yep, yeah, full service. Okay, and it was last done in July 2018, so we can get on to that straight away. Right, let's go back to the servicing bench. Let's just have a quick check in, see what people are saying. It's way too warm today, says Harry Todd Hunter. Well, I'm lucky up the loft because uh, with it being morning time, it's still uh, quite cool up here. But uh, yeah, check in with me tonight and it won't be the same. Uh, hello. Sorry, the the LMB channel says the 800 plus member class, S15 guesses Mark. It's going to be an 8F. Mark's deleted a message from Harry. I hope he wasn't being rude. Probably not. Uh, what's uh, what has been what who's been salty? Let's see. Uh, must uh, Harry must be getting quite cross about the temperature then. That must be it. I don't know what he said, so I can't comment, but uh, keep the language clean because we've got kids watching sometimes. And even for people who aren't kids, we don't want any bad language over here. We want a, a nice positive atmosphere. So that's the loco. Let me grab the tender. I will do the tender because it's got tender pickups, so it might as well get a good all clean. Right, let's find it. The 8F tender. And I really like the 8F tender. It's a really nice tender on this one. Right. There we go. 
I want to support by sending some monies, but the stupid thing won't work. Well, thank you, Arthur. I do appreciate it. It's the thought that counts. If you really can't get it to work, um, don't worry about it, obviously. Thank you for the thought, though. Right, let's have a look at the 8F then. Uh, now, this is DCC fitted, as I've already said, which means I've got to be careful. I can't go connecting it straight to my DC power supply, or at least I don't like to, because it's not actually a controller. So I don't know how it would agree with the decoder, but uh, we will see. So let me use my uh, mechanical paintbrush, as I will call it. This is the paintbrush that doesn't go on bodywork. This just goes on uh, the linkage and things, so it doesn't matter if it's a bit greasy. And I do it to start with so that uh, I don't get things greasy again later on uh, after I've cleaned it. Right, let's, uh, what shall we do first? Mm, let's take off the base and we'll have a look at the axles because it's uh, easier to hold the chassis inside the body. If I take it off, it'll be quite awkward. So let's undo the screws. It looks like we've got four screws under here. Can't exactly remember whether the pickups are removable or not on this. Or well, they might be hardwired in. I'm not too sure. One way to find out. Let me grab my magnet. These screws aren't coming out. Yes, they are now. Right, that's two, three screws, four screws. Yeah, that's a brilliant discovery that. You just bang a really powerful magnet onto your screwdriver and you can uh, just extract screws if they're not uh, coming out. Saves you having to get tweezers around them or whatever. Right, let's remove that. Oh no, oh no, yep, no, the bogies, the bogies? The pickups are free to come out, so that's fine. Excellent, that means we can be very, very thorough. Okay, I, was, I think I was saying bogies because this front truck is now free to come off. So if anybody wanted to know what the ATF truck looks like on its own, uh, wonder no more. All right, pick up. And another pick up. Well, should we deal with those straight away? Now, it's important you remember the orientation of the pickups, which is why I don't rotate them and I always put them down uh, so that they, so it's always clear which sort of where they came from. If you get them in the wrong way, they can jam up. And it's very easy to ruin these. So I'm even cleaning the surface that doesn't touch the wheels just uh, to get rid of the oil, make sure everything's clean. And it's also important that you good, uh, give these contacts here a good clean. Like that. There we go. That should do it. Let's do the other one. Not very dirty though, are they? I don't know if you can see, but they really are good and clean. But I suppose it's because she's got tender pickups as well, so there's not a lot of sparking going on. Right, let's see. Put that back down there. And uh, now I've noticed that this is glistening. Yeah, look at that, really glistening with oil. So I'm just gonna get another cotton bud with some IPA on it and just uh, give that a little mop up. And then we'll add some fresh oil later on. But there shouldn't really be oil on this anyway, but uh, obviously it gets everywhere. So there we go, give that a mop with the IPA. This has gone oil coloured. And then just dry it with the other end. And that just lifts off a little bit of that oil. It doesn't have to be completely clean and free of oil, because uh, there's no, no point doing that really. Right, there we have it. I can see a few hairs inside here already, uh, but they don't appear to be wrapped around the axles, which is lucky. There we go. Can't get this all the way out because it is wired on, unfortunately. So uh, I think that's about as far as I can get it. Uh, but a quick visual inspection of the axles reveals that everything is looking good. There is no real hair problem. Maybe there's a little sort of dirtiness on this front axle. So this is quite a tricky process. Uh, normally when you can get this plate out of the way, you can pretty much lift out any axle you like and give it a clean. Uh, but uh, luckily the only axle that seems to need that is the front one. The others look pretty good, so give that a good clean. Yeah, fair bit of grub just coming off that, so I'm glad I did that. That looks better. Get the bearings back in place. I apologise that you can't see this too well. And then put that back in place. Cool. So let's get these oiled then. There you go, you can see the bearings just there if anyone's interested. That's what I'm talking about when I say turn metal bearings in a review. Uh, a lot of the Backman Locos, especially the Backman 280s, don't have those. And given their price, that's very, very confusing. <laughs> right, so lightly oiled. Make sure this is good and clean. Might as well clean underneath it a little bit as well. Have a look. No, it's not too bad. Okay, and let us place this back down. And I won't forget to put the bogey back on either. Well, it's not a bogey, is it? It's a truck. 
If you want train ASMR, check out Sam's Microsoft Train Simulator video. It was not intended to be ASMR. But there are no loud bangs, so I don't know if you want to watch something to send you to sleep. Um, yeah, feel free to watch that. It's certainly boring enough, put it that way. Speaking of video games, I am thinking about starting to do some streaming on Twitch. If anybody would be up for that, let me know. Uh, not necessarily train games, just uh, any video games. Uh, no violent ones, obviously, because uh, I want anybody from my audience to be able to watch. Um, but uh, yeah, if anybody likes the sound of that, I do quite enjoy Twitch, and I wouldn't mind giving it a shot. Backman Hornby locomotives are junk, says Steam of the Steam Train. Blimey. That's a bit of a bold statement, especially when I've got a loft full of them. Go on then, I'll be, I'll be willing to listen to reason on that. If you have a good reason why you believe they're junk, uh, let us have it and we will, we will listen and then tell you you're wrong. <laughs> no, we will listen, we will listen. Right, I think the pickups are back in properly. Obviously, they don't get held in until you've put this plate back on. Uh, sometimes they don't make very good contact with the, uh, with the actual contacts inside, uh, which does suck a little bit. Uh, so you've got to watch it. But what I'll do is I'll get the screws back in and then before I tighten them, I'll push the pickups in so that they're making good contact. Let's see if anyone's got anything to say about about Twitch. Uh, sorry about that, but my experience is negative, says Steam of the Steam Train. Well, that's understandable. I mean, over the last few years, there have been some slightly dubious releases and uh, none of them are too good for sort of beginners. There's no way really to get used to models without spending a lot of money and it's a risk isn't it I mean your first locomotive I mean you've got to start somewhere haven't you and when even the most basic tender locomotive costs so much money you can understand that people will be miffed if things go wrong because it is a lot of money so as you can see here I'm uh, putting these well, I'm shoving these pickups right in so that they <laughs> I'm not making a lot of sense here. I can't get my screwdriver in, to be honest. So that when I tighten the screws, they're shoved right down onto the contacts. That's better. There we are. Oh, butterfingers today. And that one. There we are. And then tighten the rest of them in. I uh, Just if you didn't notice that, I used a needle just to shove them in. Right. Can't really test whether those are working at this point but they are at least shoved in place, which is good. Don't want to over tighten those because they do have a tendency to warp, but that looks all right to me. Right, I've just noticed that obviously since I've been handling this, it's gotten a little greasy. So I'm gonna just wipe that up a little bit. What's everyone saying? Twitch is a live streaming program. Ah, yes, were people asking? Who was asking? Uh, Twitch, it's just a, it's basically like YouTube Live, but it's optimized for gamers, although you don't have to game on it, although I think I would. I mean, maybe one day I could host some of the Sam's Trains live streams over there, because uh, you, you don't have to do games, but it works best for games, I think. I mean, I don't know much about it. Obviously, I've not done any streams on there yet, but uh, yeah, it, uh, it does look good, and uh, I do like video games, and I've got quite a good PC that will run any video game, so I thought, why not give it a shot? not had a lot of time this week, but uh, as soon as I do, hopefully over the summer, when it's too hot to be up here, I might do some video game streams. Uh, I'm thinking about doing Transport Fever. I've got a copy of Transport Fever now, or I downloaded it on Steam. Uh, what else? Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, I thought I'd do. That was probably my favourite game growing up. There's all kinds of stuff. Chris Sawyer's Locomotion might be nice. I do like that one. Right, I've noticed that there's a screw at the back of this 8F, which I'm surprised I didn't say on my notes. I might add that to my notes. Because it's uh, easy to forget that and uh, try and sort of really yank the body out of here and uh, cause some damage. But no, it seems today we've gotten away with it. So it is chipped, and there's the decoder in the front there, so I will probably remove that for, the, for testing purposes. Uh, but let us just access the motor. Uh, and annoyingly, the motor on this has got the brushes at the front, so you can't put too much oil on it, on the worm drive, because it will uh, poison the mechanism, so to speak. So there we have it. There's the worm drive. I won't get the motor out of this. Let's go in a bit, shall we? 
Ooh, zoom, zoom, zoom. I won't start singing zoom, don't worry. Okay, so yep, yeah, you can see the worm drive, the gears are inside there. You can remove those gears for cleaning. Shall I do? Looks a bit grotty, actually. Let's just do that and demonstrate it. This is optional, I should say. It's not a necessary step, but uh, it, may be, it may be worth it for you. Grab that gear out. Yeah, you can see there's some uh, dried lubricant on there. So I'm going to clean that off and put some fresh on. Hello, Sam's Train, says Cecilia Nose Cheese. <laughs> I'm sure your name isn't Nose Cheese. And what a horrible thought that is. But oops, but hello nonetheless. Hope you enjoy the stream. It's probably not interesting for everybody, this. And if that's true, I do apologise. But I know some people quite like it. Uh, but I don't do it too often, so you haven't got to watch it every week. Every month, I'm thinking. It's about a month since I last did this. Uh, right, I have actually put that back in without oiling it, but that's okay. I think I can get the oil on it quite all right. Bit of oil on the worm drive, bit on the gears. There we are. Bit at the back of the motor. Can be quite generous on the back there, because obviously the brushes are at the front. Naughty, naughty, Hornby. Right. There we go, put that back on and screw it back on there. I think now we're ready to de-chip it, temporarily of course, and then give it a little test run on the bench supply and uh, just clean the wheels. So I'm going to very carefully ease the decoder socket out of here. Or the plug I should say, it's not the socket, it is the plug that I'm easing out. Right, I think we're ready. There we go. Oh, the decoder's fallen away. That's nice. That means it's going to be away from uh, my uh, monstrous power supply. This is interesting, said Ryan. Well, I'm glad you think so. <coughs> it's not very interest. <coughs> oh, blimey. It's not very interesting for me doing it on my own because obviously, you know, one or two, but when you've got 300 locos to do every year, it gets a bit monotonous. So if I'm streaming, it's at least gives me something to do, you know, I can talk a bit while I'm doing it rather than uh, just, you know. Right, let's give this a little oil then, move this into shop first of all. So yeah, with these you really don't want too much, tiny, tiny bit of oil will do the trick just fine. On every point that moves, there we are. And if you accidentally put too much on, don't just leave it, you just get yourself a cotton bud and mop it up. I think that's what I would strongly recommend. And of course, if you get too much oil, it gets things get sticky and things stick to it. You get bits of hair and fluff all over it. And obviously that can cause friction and put the motor under some stress. It's just really not good. <laughs> it's a can of worms. Right, couple of spots where I was a bit too generous with the oil, so we'll just mop some of those up. Uh, where was it on this side? I think it was that joint there. Okay, and all you have to do is touch the cotton bud to the contact and the, the oil flows off it. It's really quite nice. Check that if you slide the wheels from side to side that the pickups move with the wheels, staying touching the wheels. Yes, that's a good, that's a good point. And as you can see, if I do this, well, you might not be able to see it, then uh, yes, that's true. But because I've had the pickups out, I know that none of them are sort of stuck. But uh, sometimes on a new model, you can get the pickups stuck. Well, you don't do it. It's, uh, it comes like that. So let's connect directly to the motor, which of course we have to because the decoder's been taken out. So there is no connection between the, the motor and the wheels right now. Very careful. Don't want to dislodge this connection. But we also need a good connection. There we are. No doubt one of those crocodiles is going to just pop off. Right, let's see if this works. Indeed it does, and look at that. The ATF is a, a superbly good slow runner. Ooh, here we go, speed it up. You want a good... Oh, it's not going any quicker than that. That's strange. I wonder if we've got a fault with this motor. Hmm. It's not good. The, uh, yeah, the motor does not want to go any faster than that. That's weird. Well, we'll see how it goes. I might have to do a motor strip down then. Oh, I don't want to do that. 
Uh, basically, I get to 5 volts or thereabouts, and it won't go any higher, which suggests that uh, there's too much current flowing. Either that or it is just a power-hungry loco, and it, it won't take more than, well, it wants to take more than 300 milliamps. Which really it shouldn't do. That's not, that's quite unusual. Equally, it might just need a warm-up, and that's what it's getting right now, so we'll try it again. There's no arcing, though, coming from the motor, which suggests that it is not in too much trouble. But if the motor is drawing a lot of current, you want to look into it, because especially if it's uh, chipped, because those decoders don't like it when you <laughs> try and pull three amps from them or whatever. They certainly don't. Might be just that it's a powerful motor, in which case that's all right. I'm noticing when, I, uh, when I'm putting my cotton bud onto the wheels and putting pressure on, uh, the voltage is dropping slightly, which means that we are at the top end of the, uh, the current draw for the power supply. Very interesting. I suppose what I need to do really is uh, get it on a more powerful supply and try it like that. But uh, I'm just going to be quick today and I'll, I'll put the decoder in, I'll assume it's okay and just uh, slap it on my track and uh, give it a shot. And it should be obvious if there's a problem. And by that I mean the decoder will explode and uh, probably create some sort of shrapnel. So that'll be fun, eh? We'll uh, do that for sure and I'll go and hide while I switch it on. Oops, almost jammed it up there. Right. Quite dirty, that. Yeah, it's definitely not going over the 5 volt mark. Very, very interesting. Uh, one of those wheels seems to have a slight alignment issue, says 722. That's interesting. Let's take a look. Uh, no, looks all right to me if I show it you from above. Very carefully. <laughs> not the best shot in the world. They're not too bad. Obviously, because it's not on the track, the wheels aren't sort of being held level, so they are free to sort of, you know, move forwards and back. But uh, generally, I think that looks as it should. But all will be, uh, all will come clear when she's on the track, so we'll try that. In fact, before I put the body back on, we'll give it a shot. But uh, for now, I reckon we can put the decoder back in. I've no idea what number the decoder is, otherwise I'd stick it on my uh, select and uh, just quickly hit the number up and give it a try. But uh, no, I don't know what it is. So, we'll just... Uh, be lazy and stick it on DC and uh, just see what happens. Right, I think we're ready to give this a try then. I won't put the body back on just yet because there is a suspected issue. But uh, everything seems to be running quite nicely. I didn't actually check when the motor was out that the wheel set was free to move easily. Uh, that's quite a good... Oops, I've just clicked on the wrong thing. Uh, that's quite a good thing to do um, if you're not sure that a loco is sound. Uh, just uh, check that the wheel set moves freely when the motor's not connected. Uh, but uh, I, looking at the way it was running, I don't think that's going to be a problem. Right, so we're just seeing if this can uh, hit those high speeds. Uh, if it can't, then uh, obviously it's not an issue, but you don't want it to be not hitting those speeds because of a fault. You want it to not hit those speeds because you decide not to. Hmm, yes, interesting. Isn't going any faster than that. And there is a little bit of smoke coming out of the motor. Right then. In that case, it is time to do a motor strip down. Oh, let joy be unconfined. Well, I did want to do this in a live stream. I didn't really want to do it while I was uh, got a lot to do, but uh, I have no choice. So I saw some smoke, which means, yes, there is indeed a slight issue with the motor. So let's do this. Oh, these are, this is fun. Now, disclaimer, there is a high risk of failure with this. It is easy to mess this up and damage the motor. And if that happens, it's a new motor job, unfortunately. I think I do have a spare motor for one of these, uh, but I don't want to use it unless I can fix the problem. So I'm going to at least try. But yeah, don't attempt this, <laughs> is, the, is the advice. If you're not absolutely confident, don't attempt it. I've done it a few times, so I'm reasonably confident, but even then, 
it's not it's not bound to work right soldering iron on let's get this motor out again all that black gunk is stuck to the bottom of it it's horrible that it's kind of like uh, look at that I might clean that off actually no I'm not I'm gonna leave it there because it helps to hold the thing in right so first of all let's lie this down we need to desolder the uh, the motor because we don't want these wires all over it while we're trying to take the thing to bits that is no fun move the body out the way just while the soldering irons out because I don't want to accidentally catch it right Soldering iron's not hot enough yet. Let's sit and twiddle our thumbs. You people are the best. Who has an A4? <laughs> Is this loco going to blow up? Uh, hopefully not, Harry. Uh, I'm going to try not to let that happen. It's too bad how the rest of the world didn't use double O gauge. Yes, indeed. Although you can't blame them for wanting to do things properly. Right, soldering iron's warm enough now. Get this wire out the way. can't actually get hold of the wire so I've, its uh, solder's gone off again now before I had a chance to whip it away. There we are, that's one. That's the other. The motor is now free. Hooray! Oh lads, I'm not looking forward to this. Okay, so now what we need to do is... yeah uh, I was going to think about having trying to do this without pulling the gear, but we are going to have to pull the gear. And for that, I will use Gear Puller. It's got a creative name. I'll give it that. It's got a creative name. Right, let's see how this works. I bet some of you haven't seen a Gear Puller before. It's not that exciting. <laughs> well, it's reasonably interesting, I suppose. So... This device will uh, yank the uh, worm, in this case, not a gear, off the motor. There we are, get that in by hand. And now, if I use this bar, I should be able to turn this. Now actually, the last time I did this with a motor was half an hour before a live stream. Uh, Laserjet had uh, requested that I run Tornado, and Tornado's motor had this issue. All right, there we go. The worm is now off. Ta-da! Magic trick. And yes, the tornado had this same issue. Again, because the brushes are at the front and the tendency is to oil it at the front. And uh, the oil goes in and uh, fouls up everything inside. I didn't know that early on. But uh, I now do. So uh, some of the time I'm having to clean up the messes I made when I was younger. Or a few years ago, at least. So we shouldn't need the gear puller again now. I'm going to put it back on using the vise, which is a bit naughty. But that's the best way I can think of. So now we're free to take this motor to pieces and uh, what I need for that is just my screwdriver and you basically very very gently so as not to stab yourself and get blood everywhere uh, ease up these little tips and the motor is free to exit and there are the brushes normally you don't get access to those but today we do and uh, there are little washers in there also which uh, need to stay as part of the motor so I'm just gonna while I'm at it clean out the brushes very gently and annoyingly I've managed to get a bit of uh, cotton from the cotton bud caught on the brushes but that's all right just very carefully ease that off with the tweezers shall I go in a bit closer yeah sorry there's not too much uh, fun and laughter while I'm doing this because it is quite an unpleasant process to say the least but it is at least fairly straightforward Right, new cotton bud. Now I'm going to be using a power tool in a moment, so if anyone has an irrational phobia of power tools, um, I don't know, take your headphones off or something, I don't know. Right, make sure these are good and clean. Looks good. You want to get the oil out because obviously the purpose of doing this is to de-oil and uh, fully clean everything. Okay. There we go, and I will need to realign these uh, washers. There we go, that looks good. Uh, let me get a needle just so that the washers are now, uh, well, so I can check that they're lined up right for when I put it back together. 
Yeah, it's come through the other end, look, so we know it's right. I believe that will have to do. So, the important thing to clean is, of course, the armature, which is sort of hiding away inside here. There it is. As you can see, the commutator here is very, very tiny compared with the triangle stuff. And it is indeed covered in oil. So I hold my hands up, that's probably my fault. And that is exactly why you never want to put too much oil on the motor, especially where the brushes are. I didn't know that in my younger days, and so I've got to be doing nasty things like this. So first of all, we'll use just the cotton bud to clean the worst of it off. And off the shaft as well, because you don't want oil getting over this. How's everyone enjoying this? This is uh, quite an unpleasant task. I mean, if, if you want to applaud at the end, you can. <laughs> no, I'm just joking there. Uh, I don't know for sure whether this is going to work. So anyway, let's keep doing this. Get the worst of it off, and then I will show you my secret weapon. Ooh, there is a secret weapon which needs plugging in, uh, which could pose a, th a potential issue. I think I'll have to unplug the soldering iron so I can plug it in. Right, that looks good. So I've cleaned off the worst of it. That is just a kind of rudimentary clean of the thing. Right, now I am just going to fiddle with the wires and things so I can get the secret weapon ooh, plugged in. And yes, you're going to get an ooh every time I mention it. Right, goggles on. Very important, if I'm showing this online, I must show the goggles. Goggles on for this. You don't want things in your eye. And here is the secret weapon. Anticlimax, I know. Okay, so watch your ears, folks. I'll talk to you again in a second. I'm just gonna really, really give this a good clean with the uh, wire wheel here. Okay. Watch your ears, final warning. Here we go. Can you still hear me? And this gives the armature a really good polish. And yes, be careful with those things. They are very, very lethal. Uh, you probably don't want your fingers near them either because uh, it doesn't look like much, but there's a lot of power behind those things. And uh, you know, if we get your hair wrapped around it or if something flies off, sometimes the little wire brushes can fly off and go in your eye. Uh, nasty, nasty things. Be sure you know what you're doing if you're using one of those. Some other YouTubers just use them without saying that and I think that's a little bit, well, dangerous if kids get it. Now it does leave a bit of dirt on there once you've done it. It polishes it up nice but it can leave it dirty which is why I clean it again afterwards. And then I will get the needle, one of my sharp needles, and clear out the gaps between the plates because that is probably what the issue is. There we are. Nothing coming out of those, strangely. But the thing is, you can't really, when, when a loco shows issues like that, when it shows smoke and starts to arc, you can't leave it, because that's when the motor starts to burn out. You've got to strike while the iron's hot and uh, get it, you know, nip it in the bud before there's a problem. How does skew winding provide a benefit? Uh, I'm no expert. As you can see, this is skew wound. It may be something to do with heat dissipation. It may be just... A nicer shape for while it's spinning I suppose it might interact with the field slightly more efficiently I think it's something to do with efficiency but uh, I have not much idea about that I'm not an expert right we can get this thing assembled then pretty much and as you can see there are literally just magnets glued onto the inside there that's what you get when you buy an expensive motor some guy glues magnets inside it Right, there's another washer on the inside there, so I'm going to get that in. 
And this is quite, this is going to snap to the sides of this now when I put it in because of the magnets. So you've got to watch it. And uh, there's no sort of easy way to do this uh, other than just to shove it in. But as you can see, it's come out the other end now. So that's fine. Now, don't worry if it doesn't spin. Obviously, this won't spin at all because it's touching the side. Uh, but now, which side does this go? Uh, that's the bottom. And it went that way, I believe. OK. So very carefully, you've got to watch the brushes here. There we go. Shove that in, and that should now spin much more freely. And indeed, it does. So you've got to be careful doing that because the brushes have to sort of flip in place and you don't want to dislodge those brushes. Right, let us reattach these little clips then. So I'll use my screwdriver again, bend those down, shove it in. These have got to be good and tight. You don't want your motor to be loose, rattling around because the spacing between everything is really important. Otherwise the brushes don't marry up to the commutator and uh, that can be a recipe for disaster. There we are, looks nice. Little dab of oil then. I won't put any on the uh, worm end yet because uh, we don't want the worm to slide off if there's oil under it. And uh, now we will test to see whether the motor actually works. Now, it can still work and there still be a fault. Uh, if it runs now, that isn't end of story, you know, clap, clap, clap. Uh, but it is at least a good sign if it seems to work. Right, here we go. Let me hold this still so it doesn't run away. Okay. Seems to work all right. I've noticed that I got the voltage slightly higher there, but I don't want to thrash it. Hmm, it's still not going... It's still not perfect. But uh, I suppose if it works, it works. Fine. Well, it's not smoking anymore. <laughs> I think that's all I can say. All right. I'm going to put the worm back on then. I'm going to do this out of shot. The camera's not trained, unfortunately, on the uh, vise. But all I'm going to do is just shove this on roughly in the same way it was before. Let's do that. Don't want to put it on too far because it can uh, bite if you're not careful. Never been bitten by a motor before though. There we are. So that is now on good and solidly and we can now I think reassemble this. Uh, I'm going to put the soldering iron back in now, which I should have done before. Otherwise it's not going to be hot when the time comes to resolder the motor. Right. Sorry about that grunting and groaning. It's just the uh, plug wasn't coming out too easily. Right. Let's zoom back again. A little bit there. Make sure that's in the right way. I'll solder the wires back on once it's in. So at least then it's held still. In fact, before soldering the wires on, I can just uh, double check whether it's working properly or not. There we go. Put the uh, motor cover back on. Oh, the right way though. I'm looking at the camera and not looking at what I'm doing. Uh, it's a typical error. Okay, screw in. And the motor, oops, if I don't drop the screwdriver, the motor is now back in place. Right, so before I wire it back up, I am going to just, uh, ooh, ooh. oh, no, I can do it. Because I just have to watch it because the decoder's back in now. So you've got to be careful. Just trying to get this clipped in with the helping hand properly. Come on, helping hand. Or I could go ahead and just uh, get it back together and give it a shot. But uh, no, I will do the thing properly. And then we'll do something a bit easier next time. I did at least predict that this might be an issue though, didn't I? You just have it in your mind. You know when a loco is slightly dodgy. Right, make sure those wires are out of the way. And we'll give it a little bit of juice. Make sure the power supply is turned down. And go easy on it when you've just done a, a process like that. You don't want to be thrashing it. Uh, let's get this focused again. 
I was conscious of it blurring out of focus last time. Right, here we go. Still a good slow speed. That to me looks not too bad, does it? And there's not really much more I can do other than swap the motor. So even though it's not perfect, can't get over five volts. Even though it isn't perfect, I would be happy to run it like that until such a time where it uh, fails or something like that. And then I will get a new motor for it. But I reckon for the time being, that will do. I think it's the same kind of motor that goes in the Tornado. But uh, don't quote me on that. Don't quote me. Right, let's get these wires sorted then. A little bit of solder in here. Uh, what shall I do here? Let's bring the helping hand in. Just grab those there. And we'll get a bit of tin on those wires. Uh, got a bit of solder left. So I'm just going to put some fresh solder onto the motor contacts. There we go. A bit of flux on there so it is uh, sort of, uh, what would you call it, sizzling a little bit. And then I'll retin the motor connections just so that we have got decent solder joints because I can't be doing with dry joints that ping off when they're running or whatever. Especially if it's DCC fitted, you can't afford for that kind of nonsense. That's one. Probably done that in the wrong order actually. It's going to be more awkward to get to the uh, top connection now, but that's all right. I don't see it being too much of a problem. Hopefully it won't be. The trick is with this getting it held in the right place so that you can uh, solder it on without burning your fingers. I think that's the worst part of it. And also without burning through any other wires, because obviously that's not ideal either. Shaky hand. Woo! Got me a little bit, slightly hot, but we're alright. Okay. Hmm. I'm not 100% convinced that the body will still fit on with it like that. I've made quite a big joint on there. But we are on the clock here, so we will assume that it will. Well, we'll try. See what happens. So, let's get this body back on. And then we'll have to just err on the side of caution when I run her in the future. No, it's not going to go in. So I've got to make tidier joints, it looks like. Or I could, I suppose, just snip a bit off. No, I think it needs to be tidier than that. Right. Where is my solder? Oh, not too much of it left. Yeah, it's got to be tidier because the body is a tight fit on here, so I can't have bits sticking out. Should have known that, really, but I thought I'd get away with it. Obviously not. Right, let's make sure this is nice and straight. Try not to wince as it burns my flesh. Right, how best to do this? We'll bend it round, I think. Nope, that isn't going to work. Wire's not long enough. That's better. Right, uh, hopefully the body will go on. Maybe I'll have to manhandle it slightly. Uh, there was a bit of tape actually holding the wires in place, but they'll be alright, I think. Or was it this bottom one in the way? I'm not sure. Let's try again. Oops, we need to get the wires on the inside. I can't, I really don't like it when the wires all sort of poke out from a model once you put it together. In fact, I have to take it to bits and fix that if that happens. Which it has. <laughs> Let's get this out. I am going to tape those wires up out of the way then. In fact, no, it's not that wire. Go on, get out of the way. Oh, you can't see this very well, sorry. Yeah, that's the problem. In these days, the DCC ready locomotives were all uh, had the sockets inside the inside the loco, not the tender. So when you chip them, there's just wires absolutely everywhere, and it's a nuisance. And they're all the same: the Princesses, the original Bullet Pacifics. They're all a nuisance to DCC fit. 
once your body's on, it's fine, obviously. It's not an issue. But it's fitting all the, getting all the wires inside at the same time. It's, it is a pain. I think we've got it. I think we're there, though. I think. Just need to get this back part down. Make sure the wires are tucked out of the way. There we are. Oh, no, that's not lined up. It's got to go down further than that. Not sure what's going on here. It might be that some of those wires are stopping the body sit sitting down properly. Oh, I don't know. This thing is a pain, isn't it? Yeah, it might be these wires that are in the way. We'll get there in the end. It's just a, a nuisance, a real, real nuisance. Make sure these wires are out of the way. It's the Also, it's got wires that go to the coupling between loco and tender, of course. And what a lot of fun they are. All right. Shall we try it again this time? Obviously, the problem is you don't want to be forcing it. I mean, if you give it a good shove, I'm sure it'd go in, but you don't want to be doing things like that. Right. All the wires out the way. It seems to go in very easily, and then it sort of just stops there. Odd. It seems to be something at the back stopping it. Although we're not quite straight. That is the screw hole. I'm looking at the screw hole at the back, as you can see it maybe hasn't quite lined up when you push it in. So, hmm, odd. So have one last look. Make sure there's no debris inside the body. Oh, there is. Did anybody see that? One of the steps. Look at that. How irritating. Right. That's never happened before. Dob of super glue then. Just have to be careful of those steps. <laughs> right. I must have done that accidentally. So I'm just putting a bit of super glue on my super glue needle and that allows you to just apply a small amount and then there's no risk of you accidentally flooding it with super glue. Okay, uh, normally I'd have to let that dry but there's no time for that today so we're going to have to press on and hope I don't mess it up. Right, now the body should go on, hopefully. Yes, there we go. Right, stupid error there on my part. I do apologise. Oh, now we've got a lot of fun. We've got to get this screw through, well, behind the front bogey, or the truck. Is it a magnetic screw? Oh, it is not. Ah, well, that is going to be fun. I hope it works. I might even have to. Well, I think it's going to be easier to do right now is take the front truck off because it's going to take me ages to get that in by luck. Right, a bit naughty that, shouldn't be really bending the uh, base plate like that, but uh, needs must I think. There we go, that was a bit easier wasn't it? There we are, slip that back in, nobody saw that did they? If I can slip it in, yep. Yeah. Is it the right way? Yeah, it's the right way, I think it's the right way. Yes, yes, yes. It wouldn't work too well if the uh, truck was upside down, I don't imagine. Right, there you go. Screw that back in. That's all right. Okay. Back screw. At least that one is magnetic. Just get that in. Hang on a second. I think I, yep, I have. I put the back screw into the uh, base plate. Silly Billy. Yeah, that was another silly error. I'll be glad when this 8F's done, I'll tell you. Right, there we go. Yes, I did notice that, that screw looked a little bit small. That must be why. Okay. Thank goodness for that. Right, let's get this down onto the track. Just make sure it works. Uh, like I say, I don't know the DCC number, so I have got to stick it on DC, which isn't ideal, but it's not too much of a problem. Right, 
There we go, make sure it actually works. Ooh, something doesn't sound good there. No, something it is jamming here, I think. Ah, yep, yeah, I see it. Hang on. One of the sanding pipes is uh, all broken and rubbish. So I'm going to just snip it off, I think. All the others are missing, so why the devil not? Okay. Let's try that again, shall we? Right, it's working. We have got a bit of an issue with uh, pickups, I reckon. But that's probably because the tender is not currently connected. So let's leave the loco there and we will get back to the servicing table and just do a little quick check on the tender, make sure all of the uh, pickups are okay and working and uh, we'll put the tender with the loco and hopefully that will work better. If not, I'm gonna have to do some serious surgery on that 8F and replace the motor because it didn't sound too healthy there, although it did move reasonably smoothly. So I am gonna go all in here and uh, get a good look at the pickups in here make sure everything is functioning as it should be uh, there is a, a coupling on the back there which needs to come out so i can get this screw there we are i should be able to lift this base out now take the screws out first where's the magnet how's everyone doing enjoying the disaster with the 8f i hope all right, there you have it. So let's just pop these axles out. They are clipped in, which is quite nice. Doesn't matter what order they go back in, but I might as well keep it as it was. And there we are, there are the pickups inside there. So let's give those a little bit of a clean. Make sure they're all adjusted. They all actually look like they're uh, as they should be, sticking out just enough, but not too much to cause friction against the wheels and make them squeak. There we are, that looks good. A little bit of oil then on these bearings. Not that they need it, but again, it just stops it squeaking. Sometimes if you clean them up too much, they are literally squeaky clean, which is not what you want. Uh, right, let's get these back in. I don't know where I took this from. Did I take it from there or there? Never mind. Like I say, it doesn't actually matter. Okay, let's give those a clean. And then before I put the base back on, I'll do a quick continuity test and make sure that it is actually making contact. If, uh, let's see, if two out of three are making good contact on each side, then we can put the base back on and not worry. If we have sort of most of them not making good contact, I'll have to adjust the pickups, and make sure that they are making better contact. All right, let's do the insides of the wheels, which is where the pickups make contact, of course. There we are. One, two, three. These aren't too dirty, which is reassuring. It's good news, that. And we can... Oh, no, I'm not putting the base back on yet, am I? Right, let's do this continuity test. So it's the same as before. We hear a beep, obviously, if there is continuity from this. So let's get that set. What's the matter? Why are you making that noise? Hmm. They are not touching. What is going on here? I wonder if the battery's low or something. Right, off. There we go. I just turned it back off and back on again and that worked. Right. Right, that is working. Good. Okay, so it's this side. One, two. Yep three okay and then the other side is the pillar or whatever you want to call it one two that one's a bit dodgy but it is at least connected so I think that will suffice don't you to be honest we've uh, run out of time a bit on this particular engine so uh, I think it will have to do uh, but that is I think that is well within spec anyway it's probably better than it would have been new at least let's get these down not tightening anything yet until all the screws are back in and I always forget the couplings. So in future, if you see me not put a coupling back on, let me know in the comments and I will do. But uh, I've mentioned it now, so I won't forget with this one. There we go. It's not an M coupling, that one, interestingly. 
Rosie is based off a US dock tank. Yes, you're absolutely right. She is indeed. Right, coal came out. Uh, which way does the coal go? That way. There we go. Right, let's try this with the tender then. I'll be honest with you, folks. I'm not 100% confident on this. The 8F when I first got her was in very bad condition. Uh, the rods and things were smashed up. And I managed to sort of rudimentally put them back together. But it wasn't brilliant. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think the wheel set is okay though. Right, let's see how this gets on. It might actually be worth uh, hooking up the DCC controller and trying her on DCC, but we'll see. Yeah, she's cut out on the points, which is weird. Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> Shall we try it on the DCC controller then? Because she's not running too great and it can't be a pickup issue. What I'll do is I'll just lift up the loco and see if we get power without the loco being on the track. Yes, we do. So the, p the connection between the loco and tender must be working. We know that much. Right, let's try this then. Uh, what I will do, let's see here. I will get the computer on the Railmaster computer, not to use Railmaster, I will just use the DCC Select. But if I get Railmaster up and running, it will tell me what number the uh, 8F is, so I know what to enter into Railmaster. Right, let me get the Select plugged in then. She may well just warm herself up and work better after a service, I don't know. I might need to adjust the pickups, I might need to adjust other things, uh, it's not clear right now. Uh, while we're waiting for the computer to load up, I will just try a few numbers at random. Try number five, because it's not going to be high, because I've had this one a while, so it's going to be reasonably close to zero or three. That's number six. Nope, nothing. Number seven. Nothing. Shout if you see a move. Number eight. Nothing. Number nine. Nothing, and now I'm onto the desktop, so I'll get Railmaster loaded up, and we will find out exactly what it was. Hopefully it's none of the ones I've tried already, because that would mean she's not working. Right, Railmaster's loading up. Let's try number 10. Nope. Number 11. I could just program her, but I don't... Oh, yep, yeah, number 11. There it is. Right, let's try this backwards. Hmm. Oh, hang on. She's not actually seated on the track very well. That might be an explanation. Slow speed looks good. Let's try a bit more of that. Look at that. So actually that inspires quite a bit of confidence, doesn't it? If she can do a slow speed like that, there can't be all that much wrong. Right, let's try it a bit faster. And she has now gotten over the express point. <laughs> Doesn't sound mightily happy. Yeah, she is actually going quite fast. I mean, you don't want an 8F going that fast, do you? But you want her to be able to. You don't want there to be a fault which prevents it. You want to just, like I say, go slow because you want to. But that is maximum speed. So, yeah, the top speed seems to have been affected. However, there is no smoke. And it does seem to be reasonably smooth. So, I don't think that is too bad, is it? I mean, it's not great, but I don't think it's too bad. And uh, we really do need to move on. So, let me just get this camera back right. Uh, I will unplug the DCC controller and plug it back into the DC side. Because I don't want to accidentally forget and zap one of my DC locos on DCC. They don't really like it when you do that. So, yes, it was just that she was on DC. She doesn't like that too much. So, let's whip that out of the way. I'll put that away later on because uh, obviously you guys don't want to see me, well, disappear to put things down. So, uh, possible motor issue, that's what I'll write on the list. Motor. Almost forgot how to spell motor, that wouldn't be good. Uh, put the date down, July 18th. July 18 even, July 19. There we go. Okay, so that is a tick for the 8F. Thank goodness that's over. Right, we've got a much, much nicer one to look at next. It's another Hornby. It's a tank engine. It's a tank engine from the Great Northern. And if anyone's familiar with my collection, you'll probably know what that is. It is the J13. Very, very nice she is too.
great runner. Let's hope I don't mess this one up. Uh, L, M, N. Oh, I've gone by, haven't I, if I'm at N. H, I, J. Hymek, Intercity, HST, J13. No notes on this one, it just says full service. And it was acquired in June 2017 at the train fair. So this is her second service. Okay, I'll catch up with some of you guys then. What's being said over in the chat? Thanks, Steam, says the LMB channel. <laughs> no politics, says the LMB channel. I agree. We need more female characters in Thomas the Tank Engine. Discuss. Ooh, what a kettle of fish that is. Well, we got some more female characters in Thomas and Friends. But they haven't been met with much joy, have they? To say it politely. I like the Bullet Pacifics, though. And I'm just glad that the Bullet, Bullet Pacifics have been represented in Thomas, to be honest. But no, it's, it's nice to have... Uh, it'll make it more interesting for girls. But to be honest, realistically, are girls going to be that interested in trains? I mean, looking at my audience, there aren't very many. <laughs> And that's not sexism, that isn't anything like that, it's just statistically, for whatever reason, women aren't into trains. Just the same as, I don't know very many males that like going shopping, for example. Doesn't mean that they're not out there, but there's not as many of them as there are maybe women that go shopping. Right, here we go then with the J13. I don't think I can get to the axles on this without removing the body, so I'm going to go ahead and try that straight away. Always a nuisance to get the body off these, uh, so what I will do is just very carefully ease it off. No nice way to do this, I don't think. Let's have a look. If I push it at the back. There we go. Oh, I don't like that. Why can't we have screws to hold the bodies on? It's a nuisance. There we go. Standard 060 chassis. This one has been a really, really beautiful chassis in this past year. Never a problem. Never stopped on points. And uh, you've seen her, haven't you, in videos. Really, really nice. Right. Let us... I would clamp this in the whole helping hand, but we're taking all these off, so we might as well not. So there's the left coupling. There's the left screw. Left for me. I don't think it's left for you, is it? Oh, it is. I'm not sure. I'm not looking at it from your side. You'll be glad to know that this should be a 10, 15 minute job at the most. It's not a big job, this. Uh, which means that we might still get through all five. We've got about, well, no more than 45 minutes to do two more after this. It's not impossible, but uh, I'll just have to leave it at that if not. Right. So quite oily, I was obviously quite generous with the oil, which you can be around the wheel sets as long as you're not going too crazy with the oil. Let's take these out. There we go, that's the wheel set. What's people saying? Uh, female Thomas the Tank Engine characters go shopping to buy coaches. <laughs> Do they really? I don't know where they'd go to buy coaches. I don't know if there are any shops. But that's the kind of funny idea that would be nice for Thomas and friends you know not offensive obviously but uh, just little tongue-in-cheek comedy like that that's, I always appreciate comedy probably not gender based comedy though that's probably not something that's going to happen it's probably not something that should be encouraged people probably would get quite offended by that as some people like to do anyway just cleaning these pickups while we're at it I reckon, yeah. I think the motor unit is permanently attached to these couplings. So what I'm going to do, couplings to these pickups. So I'm going to take this out while I put the wheel set back in. And that should make it even quicker uh, to reattach the wheel set. Otherwise you've got to pin the couplings, uh, pin these pickups back while you get the wheels in and it's just a nightmare. It really is a nightmare. So there you have it. There's the Type M motor, I think it is. Very nice thing. Well, it's not as good as the X04, but uh, it's certainly quieter, put it that way. So let's clean the chassis up a little bit. It's not particularly dirty, but it's all right. There we go. Let's clean up the underside. It's actually good and clean looking. Very good and clean. There we are. That's all it is. That's the chassis block. And it is quite heavy, this. It's made of metal. 
Right, let me clean the axles then. Uh, get some new cotton buds. I think those are all looking a bit dirty. I want to see Gordon interact with an LMS locomotive, says Arthur Young. Well, I won't ask you to define interact. <laughs> Let's not go there. Well, I don't know that you were being... Let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about Gordon interacting with anything, shall we? This is a children-friendly area. Right, let's get these <laughs> let's get these bearings back in. That for one second there, this stream took a very very strange direction, and I did not like it. I can't think of anyone who would except Mark. I think Mark will have liked it. Right, let's. Oh, I moved it the wrong way. Let's get this autofocus sorted out. Well, I'm not actually. I don't have it on autofocus because it drifts out. But every time I adjust the zoom, it uh, it goes out of focus, which makes sense. Little bit of oil, not too much this time. I reckon I must have gone overboard a bit last time. Which sometimes happens when you're excited about a model and you want it to run as well as possible. But it doesn't always uh, make it run better, just adding more oil, obviously. Okay, so there we go, that is looking good. Let's get these screws back in. Uh, which one's which, it doesn't matter. Right, again, I'm gonna put them all in loosely just to make sure they're all threaded in properly and then I will tighten everything up. That one's got some rubbish on it. I don't know what that is. Everybody behaving, Mark. I see something you've said. Ahem. Apparently, according to Harry, there is fascination. I'm going to have to look at this and find out what's been going on. There's some fascination with Harry at the moment. The art wheel set is turning around very, very nicely. Look at that. Lovely. Rosy sandwich, says Rising Sun. Yes, there was a rosy sandwich on, uh, what was it, Saturday's video? Right. Couplings, oh, I missed. Couplings can go back on. There we go. And we shouldn't have to mess around too much with the wheel set. I noticed this used to have a traction tyre on it, but it's been removed. I don't believe it had one to start with when I first got it which is uh, strange, but it wasn't a brand new model, so I guess it's fair enough. Right, so there we go. We have the motor unit here, which I will put a little bit of oil on. Clean it out. I noticed there's some hair up there. Well, not hair, but just general. Looks like it's been in someone's ear, doesn't it? Okay, let's not make this gross. Right, a little bit of oil on the worm drive. A little bit on the motor. A little bit on here. There we are. And let's ease this thing back in, making sure the pickups go in nicely. This is the uh, awkward part, I would say. It's worth just uh, taking your time with this bit, and making sure it all goes down properly. There we are. Pickups in behind the wheels. Because if they, if you accidentally force them down in front of the wheels, it can bend them, which is not nice. So there we are, as you can see, all the pickups are now tucked behind the wheels, which means we're ready to screw the motor back down. And now the wheel set should be locked up, i.e. should be geared with the motor now. If it's not, I've done something wrong. Hopefully not. Let's get this washer back on the screw. Is that lined up? Yeah, it looks like it is. Let's screw this in. There you go. Yep, the wheels are now locked up, which is good. Right, I will put a bit of oil. We can now hold this in because the couplings are staying on. So let's hold that there. Oh, need to hold that a bit better. Okay, uh, can you still see that? More or less. A uh, bit of oil then on the rods. Only a little bit. But obviously there is quite a bit of force that goes through those to turn the other wheels. Here we are. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if this works. Oh, Arthur says, are you serious? My Royal Scot won't run. Sorry to hear that. You're here, you're in the right place though. <laughs> though I don't actually have a Hornby Royal Scot. Mine is mainline, I believe. Right, let's give this a try. There we are, that's very nice. And once we get this onto the track, you'll see, assuming I haven't messed something up, you'll see what a nice smooth runner she is. Well, slow, she does a great crawl. Right, clean the wheels then, 
and this is the sprung axle here for some reason the back axles on these were always sprung I don't think they are anymore the LMS Ginty that Hornby do now I don't believe has a rear axle that's sprung but yeah really weird I don't know why they did that so it's like it's got suspension I mean I suppose it allows it to sit on the track better more accurately I don't know there is a reason there was a reason but I forgot what it was but it obviously can't have been that crucial because uh, they've knocked it on the head these days and uh, they've just put I think regular just regular bearings in there instead which is okay they, they do still run very very nice Okay, the insides of the wheels, you might have noticed that the centre two wheels don't have pickups going to them and I think that's just because uh, that would have had a traction tyre on it originally, so there's no cause. Uh, Mayo says, I want the Ginty, why do I only have 67 subscribers? Hey Sam, I can't wait for the draw of the giveaway at the end of the year. Best regards, Mayo. Thank you very much, Mayo, that's very, very kind. I do appreciate that. And uh, the giveaway draw isn't quite as far away as you might think. It is coming in August, not at the end of the year, so... It's not very far away. Although I will be doing another at the end of the year. Ooh, hints. I'm not saying any more, although you probably guess. <laughs> okay, that looks good to me. Let's get the body back on and we'll get it down onto the track. So here's the body and you'll be pleased to hear returning the body uh, is a lot easier than getting it off. So you just hook the front ridges back in there. Make sure none of the wires are in the way, which they are. Drat, let's just move that. There we are. Nope, there we are not. Let's get this in. Honestly, there's one wire. There is one wire on this whole model, and it's the one that's in the way. There we are. And then we just uh, shove it down like that, nice and gently, and it clicks. That's fantastic. Thanks, Mayo Knees, <laughs> says Mark. Come on now, Mayo's being very generous. No, ain't no need to call him Mayo Knees. Right, let's see if this works on the track. Fingers crossed it will. I don't want to be taking another one of these apart again. Right, there we go. Let's try it. Oh yes, she works. So yeah, it's just as you would expect, but the slow speed is fantastic. Let's show you that. There we are, she is actually moving there. That is astonishing. Do you actually believe that she's moving there? She really, really is. Amazing, really, really good that. So that is a success, definitely more so than the 8F was. I'll tell you what, if that 8F becomes troublesome, I might even be tempted to buy one of the latest Hornby releases of it. Ooh, that's quite a tempting idea. If I can find one for a good price. Right, July 18, July 19. I know it is only June at the moment, but I'm doing these for next month. Oh, we have a nightmare of a loco next. It is the Railroad Patriot. Oh my goodness me. Horrendous. This might finish me off today. We will have to see. Just finding its page. Right, I will explain what the issue is with the Patriots. It's not serious, it's more... Hmm, how do I say this? It's more just the, the way it's been assembled, which is not easy to do. It really is not. <sighs> I'm not looking forward to this. Right, let me go and grab it. Let me get back to the normal camera. Zoom out a little bit. Ready? It's getting a bit warm up here now. I think I'll switch the soldering line off just to minimise the heat because it is kind of right next to me. Right, let me go and grab the Railroad Patriot. And it is uh, Lady... I don't know what it is. Is it Lady Godiva? It's not the uh, the green version that you know I've got. Right. Let's see. It is... Oh, yes, it is. It's Lady Cadaver. Now, this is actually the railroad version on an old body. I haven't done this, but it actually looks really, really lovely. Right, let's see. Right, so it is the version that disconnects from the tender, so it's obviously a few years old. Put this to one side. Right. Let's give this a little brush over then. There we are, little brush, lovely model, never reviewed this one, and we will get on to the issues with this. Right, so the issues are the pickups, 
it is a nightmare to get these pickups back in place after you've uh, serviced them. Uh, I'm, I was thinking about just not bothering, but uh, you know, it's not much point doing this if you're not going to take a look at the pickups. So I'm going to, but uh, believe me, this is going to be frustrating. I'll try though. Okay, here we go. Undo these screws. I just remember that it was so frustrating. They basically get trapped behind this. Hang on, let me show you. When I get this off, I'll show you. You need six hands to do this. If you had six hands, I don't know if we could get Mother Hydra or some sort of sea monster here, we'd be fine. All right, is this coming loose? Yes, it is. Right, let me just clean this off. Now, part of the problem is this base plate, I think. I think that is part of the issue. And whoever owned this before has obviously had issues with it too, because as you can see, the pickups were all wonky and bent. They were like that last year when I bought it. But as you can see, there's like a, a shell effect here. You can see there's like a, a groove in here, and the pickups have a tendency to get trapped behind there. So you've got to get all of them outside of that, otherwise they just get trapped. It's a nuisance. It really is a nuisance. And plus, they've already been bent up, I think, by the previous owner. So, yeah, pretty nasty, this. And as you can see, the pickups here, can you see that one? It's all sort of bent already. So it really does want to gut underneath that base plate and uh, cause problems. Uh, yeah, and obviously, you bend them more if you get it trapped. So you can't just go for it. You've got to really make sure that they're not trapped, otherwise you do uh, sort of bend them worse. But I think, to be honest, there's not a lot you can do. I don't think these have a, much of a long life, which is a shame because they're great models and they run lovely. Right, I can't get that pickup piece out, so what I'm going to have to do is just push it slightly left and right and clean the pickups as best I can. I see that actually one of the pickups on this wheel is missing. So that must have gotten bent up. I seem to remember removing one. If it got too badly ruined, that's probably why. So I only need five hands for this, that's good. I'm closer. If I get my feet out, I suppose that makes four. <laughs> okay, I've cleaned those pickups as best I can. Luckily, they don't look very dirty. This loco hasn't run very much. Which is a shame, actually. If I can actually get her back together after this, I'll run her more this year so that she actually uh, gets a chance to. Because, like I say, I don't know how many more of these services she'll stand. Right, let's try and get this base back on then. Oh my goodness, I don't like doing this. Right, so that one is behind. Oh, is this the right way? Yes, this is the right way. So, I'm going to use my screwdriver just to pull these out. There we are, that's one out. That's another out. That one's gone back in. Okay, that looks good. Let's get the centre ones. Let's get the front one. Now you see I'm really, really cautious about pushing this now. Because if I give that a good shove and one of them is not in place, it's gonna wreck it. But amazingly, I think I've done it. That did not take long. I hyped that up to be something terrible because I thought I would be here 10 minutes purely trying to get this base back on, but I've actually managed to do it. Well, I must have uh, developed my pickup management skills over the last year because it took me ages last time. But let's not count our chickens until we've seen a run, shall we? Because you never know. There we are, tighten these up. And something that is bugging me is the, uh, the front bogey wheels are quite dirty. I can see the dirt on them. So I'm going to have to clean those, I think. There we go. And by the way, I have got uh, something else on tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, I'm not going to be able to do another one of these streams. Um, so most likely, I think today will be it for this month. Uh, we'll do some more next month. Uh, but yeah, a friend of mine um, is, uh, well, basically last week, his computer went pop. Well, it didn't go pop, but it was uh, playing up. We built his computer about six years ago. Uh, we built it for about £120, literally, and it was quite a good PC for £120. It had a quad-core AMD processor inside. Uh, I put up the RAM, and I think I gave him the hard drive as well, so it was quite cheap in that sense. Uh, however, there is a graphics card issue, and it was only a sort of fanless 
twenty pound graphics card, and he he says, you know, I want to put a decent graphics card in there, but the problem is, the rest of the PC is so was so cheap uh, that you know it's a bit like putting a cherry on top of a turd, if you know what I mean, by putting a decent graphics card in there. So we've ordered all the new parts for his PC last week on Saturday it was. And uh, we've been waiting for those to arrive, and apparently the final part, the CPU, is arriving today. So I'm going to be going over tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to need the most of the day uh, to build his PC for him. We're going to do it together. Right, so there we have it. Uh, annoyingly, it's the same motor as inside the 8F, so I'm going to have to be careful with how I oil this one. But uh, let's just expose this. Let's unscrew the mounter, the motor mounting bracket, I'm sorry. Give that a little bit of oil. Yep, there's not too much oil floating around in there. I'm not going to take the other gears out this time. I think I can just give those a bit of oil. I'm pretty sure I gave those a clean last time because, uh, well, last time was the first time. I think I've only had her a year. And uh, yeah, I would have taken her to pieces very thoroughly then and uh, put everything, you know, cleaned everything up. So I'm pretty sure that will be okay. Screw that back on. We go no chip or anything in this one this is a dc locomotive which is a breath of fresh air after that 8f so that's good uh, so i'll flip her over we'll get her some juice and we will get her running on dc and clean those wheels and that will be the moment of truth to tell us whether or not those pickups are tucked back out the way all right hopefully they are right flip this over get the helping hand to grab this properly there we go there you go all right okay a little bit of oil then on the mechanism. Well, it's not the mechanism really. I suppose you would consider the uh, coupling rods the mechanism because they actually do contribute to the power of the model by turning the other two non-driven wheels. There we go. The oil pen is behaving itself today, by the way, not having any gushes of oil flowing out of it. It must be getting empty. They work best when they're empty. Or close to empty, not completely empty. They don't work completely, they don't work all that well when they're completely empty. Yep, yeah, Ronin Tier 1, same motor in a lot of brands, model trains made in China. Yeah, that's true. But this particular one is not very nice because, as I say, the, the brushes are at the worm end, which is stupid, really, if you think about it, because that is where people are going to oil. And that's where you need to oil. You can't not oil the worm because things will get really quite grating. But that just encourages oil to get to the brushes and the commutator and it causes problems like we saw on the 8F. Although, to be fair, I did over oil the 8F, probably. I don't know for sure, but it's one of my first engines, so yeah. Right, she's running very nice. Look at that. Uh, yep, she does go all the way up to 10 volts. So luckily, even though that motor is the same as the one in the 8F. We haven't got the same problem with it. So be pleased to know I'm not dismantling that one, unless it goes pop right now. Hopefully not. I didn't put any oil on the bearing itself. Right, Lady Godiva. I always thought Lady Godiva starts with a G, but it starts with a C. What does it? Yeah, it's definitely a C. What do I know? I'm a bit ignorant, aren't I? can also request a running session train for the next regular live stream or does that apply says Mayo yeah sure you can although you might have to send it let's see here because I normally look at the super chat messages in order to get the request so I just need to think because the next stream's not for a month or so I don't want to forget so if you can send me an email well, in fact we can't do that because then anybody could send me an email pretending to be you send me a, a direct message on YouTube Mayo with your request and uh, I will do that for you. And again, thank you for the donation. It's very kind of you. And you can always remind me, everybody, during the live stream, if for some reason I don't get it, or if I forget, just remind me. Right, just making sure these wheels are clean, going over them again until the cotton bud's clean. And then, just because the pickups are an issue with this, I'm going to actually test each pickup, just to make sure it is working. So here's what you do to test each pickup. I did this last time, I think. So you place power to one of the wheels. That one won't work because that had the pickup removed. That one should work. Yes, indeed it does, pretty much. Not brilliantly, but it is picking up. 
uh, and that one is. We know that one is, so let's power that. That one is, that one is. And I think that one is slightly dodgy then. Just make sure I bend it out very slightly. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. Uh, the tender does have pickups on this one, so uh, I'm not too worried about every single one of them working, which is why I probably took the decision to remove one of those last time. Uh, if it didn't have any tender pickups, I would have had to think very carefully about doing that, because only two pickups on one track is not good. Especially with a 460, it's a bit unnecessary, really. But uh, no, I think it's fine with this. So I will do a quick check on the tender. I think this will have to be the last one. I'll double check what the, the next one is on the list, just in case anyone's interested. But uh, if it's not just a five minute job, which very few of them are, I will have to leave that for another day, because I've got to get ready and get going this afternoon. Right, still got time to look at the tender though. So there we go, that is all screwed back together. Let's take that loco out, we'll test it with the tender this time. Lovely tender, take a moment to appreciate that tender. It's lovely that, got my fingerprints on it, which is less lovely, and I don't really want to wipe it on the towel. I've got a duster, that'll do. There we are, that's better. Yeah, it marks very easily, that tender. I don't know why. Right, I'm not going to be accessing the pickups on this tender because uh, it's a nightmare. We've got to remove the body and everything. So I will just clean the wheels and double check that they are, at least most of them, working properly. I think this is one of those Mazak rot tenders as well. That uh, particular axle isn't moving too freely, which means there could be some swelling going on there. But uh, hopefully it won't be too much of a problem. It's normally not an issue with the tenders, as long as they're not too heavy. I will put some oil on it though. Right, clean the wheels then. The centre axle here is quite, heavy, uh, quite heavily dirty, which suggests that that is the one that's taking most of the weight. And actually we found that, didn't we? I think there is, was it the compound, the, mid, the uh, Hornby black compound? That one rocked back and forth on its middle axle, didn't it, the tender? I noticed that. So that must be a fault with the design. But that isn't great for picking up, is it? Because you've only got the, the middle axle that's guaranteed to pick up, and I don't even know if that's got pickups. No, it, it doesn't. I don't think. We'll have to test that. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Which means that if that, is, if that is taking most of the weight and the other two are pivoting off, it's probably only going to get two sets of pickups working, which isn't brilliant, is it? Right, let's test this for sure. Let's test the theory. So I'm pretty sure that foot, that first axle has got pickups on it. I can see them. Although I can't get any connection from that. That's strange. Hmm, no, nothing coming from that. Let's just do a little short circuit on the power supply and see if we can get it to work there, because obviously it's a bit sensitive. So if I get a better connection, nothing from there. Ah, yep, yeah. so that is shorting, that is shorting, that's good. Yeah, sometimes you need a better connection on the multimeter before it will beep. That's shorting, that's not. So yeah, there are no pickups on that center axle and that's shorting, right. Phew, um, I thought for a minute I'd have to take the thing apart, but it looks as though it's fine. Ren is Hornby Dublo modified to two rail. Yes, that's pretty much true. Uh, I think they dropped a few of the models, and uh, I think actually it goes beyond that sometimes. Some of the mechanisms were completely revamped as well. But yes, I don't think Ren did any three rail models, did they? I think it was all two rail. Right, let's try this Lady Godiva then in this lovely uh, British Railways black livery. Absolutely love this. Okay, on to the track you go. I will actually uh, lift the loco off the track as well once we know she's working. Oh, front bogey's off. Sorry, that was my fault. No excuse for that. Let's try it slowly on the express points because that will tell us if there's any issues. Oh yeah. Beautiful smooth runner. I'm uh, quite pleased with how that went actually. I was expecting it to be worse. Right, let me lift her up, make sure the tender is actually making a connection. Yes it is. Okay, that's good. 
Right, back she goes to the railroad shelf. And I think that will just about do it. I will double check. There's a chance that if it's a quick one, I might just be able to cram it in. But chances are that's not the case. So I think that'll be the last. Anyway, let me give that a tick. So that is the Patriot Black. I thought he said green then. I thought, oh no, I've done the wrong one. Uh, July 19 is the next one. That's a tick. And the next one was the Class 86. Uh, which is a, a great electric from Hornby. So I'll save that one. I'll do that one another time because I think, or shall I? No, I, I better not. I haven't really got time for that. So I think what we'll do instead is I'll just have five minutes talking with you guys uh, because I haven't really got time to do another one. So we'll uh, just uh, see what, uh, we'll just hear from a few people, give some shout outs and things. Uh, face reveal, says Kyle's Trains. <laughs> Did my face get in the shot there? I, most people know what I look like, I think. Uh, Arthur Young is going, he says night. It's For some reason it wants me to ban that message, Arthur. I don't know why, there we go. Your socks match the carpet perfectly. Do they? They actually look uh, blue against the carpet, but they are grey. Well, isn't that interesting? I've just put my sock up onto the workbench so everyone can see it. Shout out, says the LMB channel. You've had quite a few today, but uh, there you go. That's another one. The tender flipped, said Harry Todd Hunter. It flipped? Are you sure? My Blackmore veil is broken, says Arthur. Oh, that's, I'm sorry to hear that. What is that? Is that, uh, is that? Was it you that was talking about the Royal Scot? Mark's doing some train simulator route building. That sounds fun. All hail, <laughs> all hail almighty God Percy, says Harry. Well, interesting view. I wouldn't have considered Percy a god but that's all right that's all right where are you off to Sam uh, can I say yeah I can go I can say uh, I've got to go to a school and uh, film a talent contest and make DVDs and no no creepy jokes please um, Joshua says bye good morning Sam are you planning to do double O scale running in the garden uh, due to this weather many thanks Harry I hadn't planned to because to be honest my neighbours probably will think I'm crazy, you know, if I go out and start talking. So the garden videos I normally do are sort of, I don't do narrations for them, if you like. I'm just quiet and film it and just put up a few minutes of engines running. Now, I quite like doing that and I know that other people enjoyed it too. But without the narration, it really just, it doesn't have much substance if you like and not many people watched them and it was a lot of work to get all of the track and the engines and things down into the garden and get it all powered and wired up and filmed and it's hot and you can't see properly and it's hard to get the camera set up and uh, you know at the end of the day if people aren't going to watch it I mean people watch it of course but uh, I just don't think they're great videos to be honest um, so yeah I don't do stuff in the garden really I haven't planned to I know me and Dan went out into the garden last year and filmed a review, but again, that's not great because it's noisy. Oh dear, I feel sorry for that school. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I don't do anything, I just set up my uh, camera rigs and uh, edit it all together afterwards. Are you planning to get the Hornby Thomas Flying Scotsman, says MT Pride 94 No, sadly not. Um, they are very nice looking, but to be honest, all it is is a Flying Scotsman with a face on it, right? Uh, and the sort of old tender-driven Flying Scotsman these days can be bought for, a, what, 30, 30, 40 quid, something like that. Uh, but because of how rare the, uh, the Hornby Flying Scotsman Thomas edition is, it costs, you know, three, four, five hundred pounds. It's just not worth it for a tender-driven flying Scotsman with a face. Um, and, you know, I, I can't justify that kind of thing. So, yeah, never mind. Uh, nom nom mayo, that sounds great. What's mayo said? Uh, the double header, the, the double tender burger at KFC is the flying Scotsman sandwich. Oh, that does sound nice. A double tender. Sounds quite uh, cumbersome, though. You'd struggle to eat that, I imagine, unless you were sitting down. If it's got two chicken tenders in it. If that is indeed what it is. I've just serviced my Royal Duties Britannia while watching this. Well, that's good. It's good to hear you've got the confidence to do it, because some people don't. But, uh, you know, the best way to do it is to go and try. I'm a racing car passing by like Lady Godiva. <laughs> 
Thomas Kissel, any chance of getting an Australian, Irish or Netherlands loco? Uh, I will never say never. I do like the sound of them. If you've got any suggestions, I will definitely look at that. If you have a site service to live Steam model, says Sammy B. No, never. Never even uh, had one in my hands, I don't believe. I don't think Horby made that many, did they? Sam, do you want to join the cult of the one true Percy? Uh, I'm all right, thank you. I'm not all into the occult, thank you very much. <laughs> Certainly not where Percy's concerned. Well, now I have an excuse to buy two new models, says Arthur. Awesome. What are those going to be? I'm working on the layout right now, says hi. And Kyle, uh, so sorry, that says that was Kyle. And Jack says hi. The LMB channel says Italian locos. Oh, very nice. Right, folks. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, it's been a roller coaster, hasn't it? It really has. Uh, but I've enjoyed it. It was good fun, and I got some good servicing done, I think. So, thank you for watching, folks. I will see you tomorrow night with another video, of course. And uh, then, same as usual, back to Monday videos, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you for the super chats. I'm not at the computer right now, so I can't go back and read them out. But I think it was just a couple. Nyrate Goal. Uh, who else was it? Uh, Mayo, I think. And there was somebody else. So, thank you, everybody, for that. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I do appreciate it. And uh, that's all, I think. So... Cheers, everybody. I will see you when I see you.